Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar. And we're here to talk about turbocharging your application with contextual analytics. And contextual analytics is one of the really new waves in application development, really looking to enable organizations to really innovate their applications to create highly valuable analytic experiences for their customers. Now, my name is Daniel Shodennis. I look after strategic growth and alliances for Yellowfin, and I'm um, really proudly joined by our CEO, Glenn Rabi. Glenn, welcome. Thanks, Dan. Glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, today we're going to be talking a little bit about contextual analytics. Um, we're going to see where that sits in the embedded analytics maturity curve. And, and this is really a guide for software vendors out there to understand where they are on that journey. Of course, you know, you're going to see it in action, um, which is very important. But also then talk about, you know, implementing contextual analytics and, you know, what does it take? What are the impacts of, you know, hopefully what you're going to see um, that could be of great value to you in the next 25 minutes. But first and foremost, Glenn, you know, what is contextual analytics all about? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Look, contextual analytics is really a much higher order form of embedded analytics. So if you know about an embedded analytics where you're plugging in a dashboard into your application, well, this takes it one step further. This is really integrating uh, analytical components, whether that be simple charts or numbers or whole dashboards, into your application's workflows so that the, as your users use your application, they are guided by data to make the right decisions. And so what we're really looking at when we think about contextual is fundamentally, how do you take your data and how do you really make it core to the way in which your customers experience your application? Um, and that's what contextual analytics is. It, it triggers uh, workflows because users are prompted into action. It supports those workflows. Um, and it really guides a user to using your application far more competently using the data uh, to drive those decision making. Excellent. And Glenn, particularly with, with software companies that we're talking about here, you know, why, why is this important? What do they need to know when it comes to contextual analytics? Well, firstly, I think, you know, and we'll talk about it a little bit more depth, but this is the next wave of application development. We're seeing a lot of vendors who are almost being data first in their approach to, to building apps, and, and we'll talk to that in a moment. Um, but the reality is it's it helps uh, software vendors in many ways. You know, firstly, if you've got a little bit of an older application, it can really enable you uh, as part of your modernization journey is to create interfaces and experiences that really lift your application in terms of the view of your customer and how your customer perceives what you do for them. Uh, the second real obvious opportunity is to increase revenue and upsell opportunities. You know, by having a far more sophisticated interface, something that is data driven, that is using AI and machine learning and, is, and helping your customers to, to really drive value out of the product means that you can obviously charge more for the value that you're creating. Um, and lastly, because the way in which uh, contextual analytics works and the way in which it helps and guides your users, you create much stickier user experiences. And the result of that, you get more loyal customers. You know, you're gonna reduce your churn and you're gonna really overall increase the value of your business uh, significantly through this. And some examples out there of um, software companies doing this at the moment? Yeah, so what we're looking at here is actually a couple of screenshots from Gainsight. So Gainsight's you know, really interesting. It's a customer engagement platform. And fundamentally, if you actually sort of decompose it, it's, it's a set of analytics that they've put together to drive action and for customer success people to be able to drive their processes and outcomes. Um, and so that's one really, really good example. You know, and what's interesting about this is that they don't actually create a lot of the data themselves. You know, they suck that data in from other sources. Um, and I think that's what's really unique about what a lot of vendors are doing. What, you know, those that have discovered the power of data and those that are thinking about how to, to really revolutionize their products with data, they are thinking data first. Another really good example is Qualtrics from SAP it does precisely the same. You know, it's bringing a whole lot of data together and through that data is driving the processes and the outcomes that they, they want their customers to have. So it's quite a fascinating space. And I think you know, you'll know you see a lot of vendors uh, starting to take this sort of data-centric first approach. Oh, great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, I guess, with the embedded analytics maturity curve and, and you know, thinking about contextual at the peak of that, at, at, at the end game. Um, a lot of organizations um, are going to be at different places on the 
maturity curve. And to understand what, we, what we've done here is really created a framework to assist with either the um, introduction of analytics or you know, the refinement of analytics capability um, within your software product. Um, so what's important to note is you know, for successful embedded analytics offerings, it needs the right strategy, the right framework, and a, and a, and a clear vision in terms of what you want to um, be able to achieve. Now, there is so much data out there and, um, you know, you want to be maximizing that um, as a software uh, a vendor and, and getting the most kind of bang for your buck in terms of monetization uh, as well. And we kind of looked at this kind of framework as helping to determine kind of where you are today and potentially some of the kind of tooling that's available uh, to, to kind of get you there. It's important as we, and we're about to go through these stages is that, you know, they're not mutually exclusive and, and particularly in the latter stages, four and five, um, these can be additive. So um, end users and your customers potentially have a variety of mechanisms to access and get the insight they need, you know, when they need it. So that thinking about kind of stage one and, you know, where there is really no capability. So you might be um, a software vendor just taking your product to market. You know, you want to get minimum viable out there all you care about is getting it out there. The additive things like analytics is, you know, further down the line. You just want to get out there to customers and get going. And this really, you know, this is, sorry, Glenn? Yeah, no, I think we've all been there, right? Like anyone who started a software company is working in a brand new product. You've all been there. You want to, you, you're, you're getting out there. You've got your next big idea and you just wanted to build that idea. And, and often, quite frankly, Analytics and reporting is the last thing on your mind, isn't that right, Dan? Oh yeah, it's 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 nowhere there. <laughs> it's just you know you, <laughs> you want to get out there, you want to start getting revenue, you want to start getting customers up there, um, and you know as soon as you, and it, it grows, and and you want to get it out to the different different people, different regions, and um, yeah, as, as great as this analytics is, it is so far from the minds of people um, getting those kind of first cuts out there, getting version one, um, getting version two. So that's, I mean, that, that's a key thing that and we talk to a lot of our, our partners who are kind of at that lower stage and getting into it. But it's, yeah, it's one of those things that we've got to get it right at, at a core product and then look to um, enhance that. And but as you can understand, this is a lower stage of that kind of maturity can, uh, curve. But one thing to really consider is that, you know, if down the line you are looking to add that capability, it is on the roadmap is think about just getting that foundation right so you can build upon it. So that might be, you know, structuring the data in a way that's going to make life easier down the road. It might be, you know, tagging and putting the metadata around that information, you know, the sometimes painful things um, from a data perspective, but down the line, it's going to make life a lot easier for you to, you know, capture that information and then provide analytical value kind of further on. Um, so th if you're at that stage, just think about, once again, trying to set up that foundation so you can build upon that uh, in the future. I have to agree, Dan, just on that. Yeah, definitely on stage one, you really do you know, always plan for the fact you're going to be building an analytics downstream. You know, don't, it may not be important now, but it definitely will be down, down the track for your product. Um, so moving on to stage two, and, you know, this is the kind of, I guess, the lowest level. And, and you think about, you know, you, you've got a product in market, you're getting customer feedback, and they are, are calling for analytics. They need something to understand what's going on in their application. And this is, I guess, minimum viable analytics, I guess. You want to tick a box. So you potentially provide a, a CSV output, a PDF output. You provide maybe API access, you know, to, you know, the data within the application. So once again, you're providing something. But realistically, I think, you know, at this level, is this going to provide real value for your customers? I mean, if they're going to get an output, they probably have some in-house kind of analytics tools that they're going to start to use this. They're going to start to visualize that information and they're leaving your application to, to do, to use your application's data um, somewhere else. So once again, yeah, so, sorry, go for it. Just tell that then. I mean, yeah, what, what I think is really interesting about this is that this stage two you know, we actually see some quite mature companies, and in fact, we're using an example here, Temenos, um, you know, that are really just just delivering stage two analytics. Um, and, and I find that really fascinating. I think when you're thinking about, again, what is it that customers want out of transactional applications? At some point, they're gonna need the data to justify the ROI that they get from your product and to understand, the, you know, how to better use your product. Um, and, you know, and I, I think the API challenge, as you were just talking to then, if, if all you're doing is providing CSVs and APIs, 
the biggest issue is you're just putting the workload on your customer. You're not, you know, yes, you've given them data, tick the box, but you've actually created a very, in my perception, a very negative customer experience because now your customers have to do all the work. They've got to think about the product. They have to understand your data models and they have to build the content themselves. And every one of your customers is going to build the content themselves. That's a huge amount of workload that's being spread across your entire customer base um, versus doing it centrally, doing it yourselves and delivering it to your customer. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and as mentioned before, you're, you're taking them away from your application as well. I mean, they're taking that data and, and, and doing that work elsewhere when ideally you want them to be in your application, it's your application's data, you know, using that within there. So there is that, as well as that kind of ex, that, that ex, experience that you're, you're, you're providing for them, I think there's an opportunity loss as well that's saying, look, oh, you know, this is, this is part of my core application. I want to keep that, my customer in there and, and utilising it um, where it makes the most um, sense for them as well. Well, especially if uh, the product that they're using to do the analysis is actually owned by one of your competitors. You know? So, <laughs> you know, if you if your service now a BMC and someone's uh, you know wants to connect Power BI or you know actually ultimately Tableau, you, you're opening yourself up to to other vendors talking to your customers um, mm -hmm. and being able to you know be able to sort of thin edge of the wedge, you get in there and start to migrate your customers to their platforms. So looking then on to kind of stage three. So stage three, you're offering essentially, you know, basic analytics, basic reporting. So this might be um, you know, a dashboard, you know, preset, parameter driven. It's all within the product, kind of like, you know, the, the bare bones, basic analytical capability um, to go further than you know, an output, but you know, provide a bit of visualization um, based on, once again, most likely uh, a growing customer need. And I guess the, while this is some capability, it is fairly low on the spectrum because ultimately um, to do this, you are more likely building this in-house. You're taking away developer resources from your core application to not only build this once, but also then maintain this going forward. Um, Glenn? That's 100% right. I mean, it's a, it's a big workload on your dev team to, to create a reporting solution, you know, you know, in theory, initially, someone sits back and goes, look, we only need a couple of reports, one or two dashboards, job's done. Um, that's not really how, you know, businesses work. And your customers, their demands will quickly outstrip the uh, ability for your development team to keep up. And you're not working on your core app anymore. Um, the second one, which I think is really interesting, and, and we sort of, we've got this example of LinkedIn here, is that, um, and that's that, it really highlights the limitations of what these parameter-driven uh, solutions deliver and that is that very quickly as a customer you want to slice and dice your data in a different way than has been imagined by the product owner and if you've tried to use LinkedIn reporting this is precisely the problem it has there you know it's very limited um, and so at the end you're almost reverting back to stage two and going can I get the data some other way can I get APIs because you're not actually helping me so on the one hand you're a little you go a little bit forward but you also pull people back because now they're going oh god this is frustrating just give me the data again all right so this is probably almost the worst place to be <laughs> apart from having nothing um because you're you're using a lot of dev time now and your customers are still wanting to use those apis yeah i think mean, just to add to that i mean there's now a, a certain level of analytical expectation that most customers, they've got some of these obviously best of class tools or you know BI tools in house, and the, the minimum level is not basic reporting. And they're either going to see your competitors providing that you know standard level of, of, of analytics and standard level of kind of dashboards. Um, but but also the other point we, we talked about is um, you know developer resources in house. If your team isn't aren't BI developers, you haven't got a, a team that has worked with data, work with business intelligence, understand the nuances of that, it is a learning curve. Um, there's a reason that organizations like us have just focused on this and done it for a long time and built that over time because there are a lot of nuances there um, to get that right. Um, so then adding that to your CRM application or your H application, um, it's going to be a huge investment if you're going to take that on and also maintain kind of best of breed uh, as well. So looking on to kind of stage four, and, and this is where I think, you know, real baseline of embedded analytics is today. So you've got, you know, the your dashboards, you've got the self-service capability, you've got that, you know, even white label. So it looks and feels like, you know, your, your 
analytical module um, looks like your core application. You know, and you're able to create. And it is, you know, it's more user friendly. You've got pre-can reports. It, it's that kind of standard embedded analytics that really kind of a, a customer. Um, you know, would expect. And this is a kind of that kind of medium kind of level of um, analytical capability. Um, there are lots of benefits here, as you can imagine. Um, but where the gaps are and, and is you're, you're presenting information, you're presenting insight, but you're not really guiding your customers, your users in terms of how to use that information. You haven't actually built either, you know, a workflow to, to help them use that information um, with other applications, with other parts of your system, or to really provide kind of context and, and allow them to, to make a decision based on that um, information. You just kind of, you're, you're servicing it and you're then saying to the, to the customer, okay, now you can do whatever you want with it. Glenn? Yeah, I think it's spot on there. Like, again, the big issue I think here, and we've all experienced it, you know, whether you've got embedded analytics or you're sort of you're doing you're using a reporting solution that's sort of you know separated out from your operational uh, workflows if you if you need to use data to do your job and do it well you've kind of got to stop what you're doing mid transaction so you could be in your CRM system for example and then you kind of pivot you turn around and then you start looking at your reporting and you're slicing dicing reports and then you've got to get back into the mode of what was I doing back in that CRM you know and so that switching of context is, is really, it's a heavy workload for the for the end user. And whilst it's really good, you know, and it serves a purpose, and this is, you know, what most people in the embedded space do, you know, we do this as well, obviously, we provide these dashboard modules and reporting and self-service modules, but we also understand the limitation, which is precisely that context switching, and does it really help me to do my job better? And that's where I think that it really falls down. Um, it's great because as a customer, I can slice and dice, I can get to my data, I can do those things, but it's a really additional workload for me as well. And, and, and think, I think obviously that leads into stage five. If you can reduce that workload, you can kind of automate some of those um, key workflows and key tasks for your customers, you've got the potential to provide some really, really strong value. And that's where this stage five, this contextual analytics comes in. This is today, this is the end goal. Um, you know, this is how you can, you know, automate those things. You can really, you know, not just spoon feed your customers, but provide that context, provide the, the direction you want them to take, um, and which can be a really huge value add um, for for not just your customers who are getting so much more value, um, not just getting a bit of insight, but know, they know how to use it and you're giving them um, the tools to actually make that decision and, and, and kind of you know, br bring about action. Um, but also obviously the benefit for yourself as an organization, providing a much higher value solution that is differing from, uh, I guess, your competitors and can provide potential kind of higher revenue gains as well. Glenn? Again, you know, I think this is, to me, this is, this is the Nirvana. This is when you start to emulate products like Gainsight, which talks about book or Qualtrics, where you put data and at the heart of your ex, your user experience, and you use that data, and you use data science models, and you use predictive analytics, and you do all those things to really help your customers to get the very most out of the application that you know that you've built. Um, and that's to me what's so exciting about this. It's just a completely different approach to building a user experience. Um, and but for the end user, all of a sudden now I'm being again, you know, it's triggering me along the way. So it's saying I need to do this because the data says that. Or as I'm doing a transaction, I'm being guided and supported because I now get to see it in context. Um, and that's what makes this this whole contextual analytics so exciting, I suspect. Yeah, and I think you, you talked about that user experience. It becomes a seamless experience. They don't to a customer. They don't feel like they're jumping around between applications, but it, it, there's a natural flow. And, and I know there's a lot of focus these days on that optimal customer experience. And this is about you know creating that 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 flow um, that they don't notice that they're jumping into an analytics module. They don't notice that they've just ordered from you know, a certain system. It's just you know a press of a button and you're using those smarts behind the scenes to really enable that um, for your customers. So Glenn, then. You know, this is the Nirvana. This is the Holy Grail. Does this mean we throw dashboards kind of out the window because they're done? No. Well, I think um, no. And this is this is what I think is really important. This is the the difference the, between the two. Dashboards are important. They help your customers to monitor overall performance. You can go in and manually slice and dice and do that self service reporting. You can do operational reporting. And so they have a real purpose and a real need. And I think what 
people have missed um, and where contextual analytics is so important is that it, it is additive to this, right? So it really takes your customers on a journey through your product. It supports their transaction, it guides, it guides them through it, and it triggers workflows. And so they are two very, very different things. And you know, from my perspective, I would be saying you want to be using both, hmm. you know, both level four and level five, you know, as part of your go-to-market with your analytics solution. Yeah, you know, we've talked a lot about it. Um, it's I think it's time to potentially showcase. A bit of that so you know the audience can, can see the context pun intended of kind of what we're talking about so i've just flipped to our uh, liquirio um, procurement application here and i'm just going to log in and just to start off i'm just going to flip to uh kind of that stage four embedded uh dashboards and analytics you can see here you know standard dashboards in, in my in my application i've got my filters here i've got my kind of reports i can create all the kind of standard baseline stuff that you expect from an embedded uh, analytics application. But when we get to the contextual analytics piece is where it gets um, very interesting. And I'm gonna let Glenn um, talk about the cool stuff because I'm a nice guy like that. Go for it, Glenn. Cool, thanks, Dan. Yeah, so what's really interesting about this, so we've logged into this homepage of a procurement application. And what's, to me, again, what, where I think this, this sort of stands out is all of a sudden you've seen lots of data on the page and the reality is it starts, you very much blur the line, like what parts are analytics, what parts are my, is part of my application? And that's the point, you know, where analytics and transactional components really merge together. And so, you know, from this example here, if I was going to go and filter my categories, my order categories as an example at the top there, um, the metrics below also get filtered. So, you know, so my use of the application filters some of the embedded components on the page. Now, this is one really simple example of contextual analytics where you've got these simple reports on a home page that react to the user uh, interaction as well. But there's some far more sophisticated models as well. So the other example we've got here is our store orders table. And so as a user, I'm looking at Sam's Club in Waterloo. These are real stores, by the way. And I want to know more about it. And so I can actually open up an entire dashboard um, that gives me lots of detail about what's happening in this particular store. So as a, as a manager, you know, I don't have to swivel around and go to my dashboard. I don't have to do anything special. I've just gone straight from the orders app, opened up this dashboard on the side, and I can really see what's happening uh, with this particular store. I can see how it relates to all the other stores. Um, you know, I can see its total over the month, et cetera. And this is really, if you think about the sort of the decision support that this provides me as a user is phenomenal, right? I know so much more about Sam's Club Waterloo than I could possibly have known if I was just using the app straight out of the box. And so that's one really good example. It gets a little bit, you know, uh, again, there's sort of layered upon that. If we go and look at some category orders, um, so that was just in the first instance, we just opened up a dashboard. It didn't really trigger anything per se, but in this particular dashboard for uh, tequilas, uh, again, we sort of contextualize, we can see all, how all my tequilas are going. But what we've also done is we've embedded a data science model that sort of, sort of predicts orders. And now from this dashboard, I can actually go and order more product. Um, and so this is a really great example of a dashboard driving transactions, closing out transactions. Um, and again, you sort of, you're melding that sort of what is transaction, what is analytics experience. And, and that's really the point about contextual analytics. You know, it's, it's using your data to create this really interesting and wonderful user experience. Um, and then, you know, so that's sort of looking at really fundamentally embedded content and some, and some workflows associated with it. The other thing that we spoke about was really alerting. And so one of the things that often your customers are looking for when they're using dashboards is actually to try and find out what's changed and is it important or do I need to react on it? Now, again, why go to a dashboard for that? Why wouldn't you just embed components? Like, so example, the elephant signals here on the right that tell me exactly what's changed at a significant level that I should be, you know, I should really be thinking about. And not only can you do it as a widget, so that's a really in your face version again, but you can be really subtle and you can actually add these kind of actions and alerts 
directly back into your application. So here we're just calling a little API, we've linked it and said there's something happened with tequila, and now I can go and find out what happened with tequila, when did it happen, what else was it related to, what actions do I need to take around that? And it's exactly that kind of workflow and using data in a really sophisticated way um, to really enable your customers to get more value out of the product. Um, and then lastly, we've got threshold-based alerts. Again, anyone who's using transactional products, whether they're CRM, HR, healthcare, finance, et cetera, fundamentally are looking for things that cross thresholds uh, and the ability to set these up easily and to generate alerts and again, to be, you know, to be prompted into action uh, is really what the goal is here. And so, as you can see, with everything we've done in this example and the way in which we've taken you through this, the point is that the, the end user is prompted into action or they're using it to support a workflow. And that's really the power of contextual analytics. You know, at no point did I have to go to my dashboard and filter for tequilas and start to look for stuff. You know, I don't have to go and open a report about whiskeys. All of it's in my application, on my homepage, linked directly into my transactional application. Uh, and that's what makes it so powerful, Dan. Hmm. Look, thanks for that, Glenn. And I think, you know, really, you know, I know we talked a lot about it beforehand, but I think seeing it in action and seeing what's possible and particularly the fact that, you know, you can really um, link up other applications. I mean, you know, obviously seen this, this uh, demonstration before, but I think for me, you know, be able to create orders and, and in the back end, you've got a predictive model. That is some of the really cool stuff that you can really build those actions in. And once again, it is a seamless experience to the customer, which, which you know, you know, for me is you know, certainly kind of exciting to provide these kind of applications. So with that, let's talk a little bit about, you know, implementing something like this. So I'm just going to go back to our slides. Now, Glenn, look, there was a lot there in terms of what's possible. Now, what are the things that I guess organizations really need to think about if they want to look to enhance or, and, and implement a contextual kind of analytics based solution? Yeah, so look, I think I should, you know, for starters, Dan, I think you know, the first thing to point out is what we just showed and demonstrated is not a year long project. You know, that's not going to take your dev team 12 months to build. Um, that is something that you could do in a few sprints. And the reason you can do it in a few sprints is because, you know, products like Yellowfin have the ability, to, you know, they've got very simple APIs that you can call. They have um, uh, simple embed links that you can call. And again, and using simple languages like JavaScript, et cetera, that enable you to make that happen. So, you know, that's the first point to get across. You're not going to be blowing a ton of time on dev time. Um, the second part is really thinking about when you go through it from end to end is going, from my end user uh, perspective, what is the analytical content? What are the charts and tables and what data is going to help them to really transact in my application in a much more sophisticated way? And that's the first question you ask is, you know, what's going to actually help my customer to drive outcomes, the outcomes that they seek? Um, having ascertained that, then the question is, you know, where will I embed it? So going back to my transactional application, you know, do I want it on my homepage? Do I want it within transactions? Do I want them separated out of a transaction, something that flows in, et cetera? Or do I want it as a pop-up? So, you know, where within my application will I be doing this? And again, you don't want to be re-engineering your whole application here. You know, you want to be able to embed this stuff pretty quickly and very simply. That's the goal. Um, and then the last one, it's a question of, you know, sort of, sort of architectures, you know, how do you want to embed this? Do you want to use just simple JavaScript? Do you want to use APIs? Do you want to really use sort of a rich embedded framework? And you may use a combination of multiples, right? So depending on what's important for you and, and the experience that you want to create, uh, you need to find tool sets that enable you to have that flexibility to choose exactly the right type of embedding uh, for the experiences that you want to build. Um, but overall, it's you know it's not a highly complex process. Um, it is, but it is changing the mindset and being data first at the start. So going, how do how does data support my transactions and building from there? And you know we we talked about I think turbocharging was the title of this this uh, webinar. You know supercharging here. What what does this mean if we if we're going to really you know provide this big leap for kind of software applications? Yeah, look, I think again, you know, going back to some of those really good examples we used earlier, um, you know, 
where where people are using data to really improve the the end user's experience um, and and embedding analytics directly into the core application, I think you're seeing this brand new class of product being created. You know, one as I said, that is data first. Um, that is going to really guide user actions and behaviors. Um, and you know, the purpose of that, the purpose of ultimately of doing that is to generate more value for your customers, right? Your customers will get a better outcome using your product. That's the goal here. Um, and then using as much automation so that you don't need to do manual analysis, right? So that you know, depending where I am within the application, you know, contextually, I'll get the data I need to be able to make the decisions I want. Um, and you bring all that together. And we just saw that, that example then. It's a really, really sexy example of what you can do, right? And so imagine taking that into your, you know, into your sales organization and letting them loosen your customer base and prospective customer base with something as solid and as exciting as that. You know, I think it, it, it definitely will supercharge your, your software. So then for that customer, we definitely. talked a little bit about that. And I know, Glenn, the term kind of data-driven gets used a lot by marketing teams in the analytics world, but what, is it, what does this kind of stuff actually mean for customers? Yeah, so like uh, you know, in the grand scheme of analytics and BI, you know, in marketing, data-driven means that your customers will look at a dashboard and hopefully do something about it. Uh, with contextual, again, you know, you are making data at the core of your customer experience. Um, and it, as I said, it'll trigger and guide them. So that is what's what's really, really interesting for me. Um, and I think that whole guided analysis, and again, we saw it with that sort of store example where I'm looking at Waterloo and all of a sudden I get to see everything about Waterloo right there from the homepage. I mean, that that to me is a huge value add as a customer that I don't have to think, huh, what, what's happening at Waterloo? You know, it's, it's there in front of me, easy to get to, instantaneous filtering contextually with the way I interact with my app. Um, you know, and it's gonna have this massive business benefit for your end users because they're gonna spend more time in the application, do more transactions and really understand the impact of what they're doing because the data will be right there in front of them. Um, you know, I think, you know, this is, a brand new way for applications to think about the value that they can create for their customers. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it is a different mindset, but it, it has it, it has the potential to be, have a huge impact um, based on what can what can now be delivered uh, to customers. But then from from then from the application side of things, and what does that mean for you know the marketing team, the sales team, the product team within some of these software vendors considering um, this technology? You know, think about your marketing team, think about your sales team. Your marketing team are going to love this. It's going to be something really highly differentiated for them to go to market with and create that new messaging around. Your sales team, well, you know, you just made their job a lot easier. You know, they've got something that you know, their customers don't have, right? So that, you know, the customers don't have and the, and the competitors don't have. And so you're not going to find a salesperson on the planet that goes, mm, don't like contextual analytics. Um, you know, I think for the customer experience team too, is you're going to take the burden off support. You're going to take the burden off your dev team who have to create reports or parameter-driven stuff. Um, and so the whole organization gets to benefit of this because the self-service is embedded into the application. Customers help themselves. They love it. Customer experience gets uh, so much better. And the whole customer success side of the business is just delighted, right? Um, and then lastly, you know, you know, the person that matters most, the CFO, um, they're going to be delighted because they're going to be more revenue and upsell opportunities. You know, you're going to be able to bring something new, highly differentiated market. You'll be able to upsell your customers to this. Um, you will be able to create a bigger, larger customer base, less churn, more revenue. Um, and so it has a, it will have a profound impact uh, on your business and for all of the key stakeholders in your business. And that's, again, what I think is so unique and exciting about adding contextual analytics to your product. And I think from from there next, really, I mean, look, so there's, there's a, people on on the webinar today. Some are at different stages of that maturity curve. So I think the starting point is, you know, understand kind of where you are, and 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 also thinking about you know, from a goal and perspective, what, what do you want to get to? And you know, particularly if you are at that kind of you know kind of stage for if you know if you've seen some of this stuff and thinking about the, you know thinking about how 
your customers are using that data and how you can help them drive more action and create that experience. I think um, you know, that, that's where you've, you've got to start um, and really evaluate kind of what, what's possible there and what's next. If you want to look at this, you want to explore this more. There's some links uh, in the uh, in the in the in the webinar details, um, a white paper um, around the model as well. Um, so with that, Glenn, any any final kind of final thoughts? No, look, I, I think you know as a you know a software developer ourselves, um, you know thinking about how you can improve your product is what you do, right? It's 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 why you get up in the morning and what makes your job so exciting. And I think. Contextual analytics is just this new layer and a new tool set that really enables you know product owners, product managers to really think about creating these brand new experiences um, that can have a profound impact not only on the customer but on the whole business uh, as well. So with that, look, I said um, any kind of if you want to explore this any further, guys, please reach out via our website and and you know, any one of the team will happily kind of you know really kind of talk about what's possible with here because this is obviously a very um, interesting and, and hot topic for us and and you know the, the team is kind of ready to go to discuss you know really what's possible when it comes to contextual analytics. So thank you for your time today and wherever you are, uh, have a good day.